Good morning, McGraw. Good to be with you. And uh, Hi, Senator. And the, the true winter weather sounds like. Yes, it is a little chilly uh, this morning. First, we haven't had a chance to talk to you since uh, your reelection. Uh, it was a bit of a barn burner. It was a nail biter. How how worried were you during the whole race? Well, I thought I needed to pay attention. Uh, you know, a hundred thousand vote margin in Missouri is still a pretty good margin, and. Uh, I was glad to have it, uh, but uh, I'm uh, even more pleased to get a chance now to uh, do this job with what I think are some real opportunities to uh, uh, fight back the regulations that I've been talking about. In fact, I was looking this morning at the uh, new person designated to head the EPA, the Attorney General of Oklahoma, uh, and his two top priorities, it would appear, would be not to go forward with the Waters of the U.S. Act, not to go forward with their power plan that in our state would have doubled our utility bill. And I think we're going to take pretty quick action on uh, the health care disaster as well. So those are three big things that I've spent the last six years fighting that uh, we may be able to declare victory here in the first few months of next year and then look for a better way to do each of those things. Let's talk about the health care for just a moment. At some point, there's a story, I think it was in the Washington Post this morning, that talks about Chuck Schumer saying that at some point to fix the health care system, you're going to need some Democrats on board. So uh, is that the way you see it, right? You're going to have to come with some bipartisan agreement on some way to move forward because Republicans can't do it all alone. Well, I, I do see it that way. In fact, I thought, and you and I have, have talked about this many times in the last few years, if there was one big lesson to learn from what the Democrats did on health care, it's the lesson was whatever you have to do to get a few people on the other side to be part of uh, the plan, you need to be willing to do. This is not something that one party wants to own the way forward, though it does look like that uh, uh, it's likely that one party will say, okay, here's here's the end date of uh, the mess we've gotten ourselves in as a country, uh, and we've got this much time to find solutions, but I absolutely think we can and should find uh, bipartisan solutions. You know, things like the bill I had in 2009 uh, to let people stay on their family insurance plan longer there appears to be un virtually universal belief that that was one of the few really good things that happened as part of the health care plan. It ought to be pretty easy to put that uh, back together. I think what we won't see is a 1,500-page Republican plan to replace the 2,700-page uh, Obamacare disaster. What I hope we see are slices at a time that get us to the place we want to be, to solve a piece of this at a time in a way that people fully understand what you're doing, uh, and then move to the next discussion of what the next thing you can get a, a bipartisan sense of that allows us to move forward. And uh, we, we've got to do that. Clearly, the current plan is the disaster that I predicted it would be, and I take no pleasure in seeing how bad this has been for Missouri families. One of the things you mentioned was the keeping uh, students or uh, kids on the policy till they're 26. The other one that seems almost universal support is uh, making sure that in insurance companies cannot uh, discriminate against people who have pre-existing conditions. Now, every expert says that's fine, but you have to make sure you're forced to buy insurance because if I don't have insurance and tomorrow, God forbid, I'm diagnosed with cancer and then I can sign up for insurance, the insurance system will go broke. How do you resolve making sure pre-existing conditions issues is solved and yet making sure everybody buys insurance? Well, you might remember when we talked about this uh, six uh, six years ago, uh, I said I was just at a hospital uh, that said, we guess we'll just put the insurance forms in the ambulance. And that's exactly what has happened in, 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 in some way that people have been able to say, okay, the doctor just told me I'm going to need surgery in the next uh, three months. I'm going to get insurance. I'm going to get the surgery. When the surgery is over, I'm not going to pay for this insurance any longer that I can't afford. So part of this is more affordable options, more choices, more ways to uh, incentivize uh, people as to how to get insurance. And then another part is looking at how you you find a way forward on that no pre-existing uh, uh, conditions pledge. We had a really good system in our state on uh, uh, 
uh, of people who did have uh, prior uh, conditions, the high risk pool, it was costing about 135% of what the average person was paying for insurance when they were paying about half what they were paying now. And that was only six years ago. So looking at that option, looking at some kind of reinsurance option uh, so that all insurance companies uh, share the risk of uh, pre-existing conditions. Uh, but uh, it, it is one of the things that's going to take some real thought because everybody obviously likes that. They like the sound of it. They like what appears to be the fairness of it. But uh, you've got to do this in a way that somehow you 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 consider what happens if you can get insurance once your house is already on fire. Uh, fire insurance gets real expensive, and uh, how are you going to achieve that particular goal that you're right? Everybody says they like, but I think we've got to be very thoughtful about how we how we achieve that, and there are ways to do it, uh, but uh, uh, that's one of the things that we need to work hard to try to ensure that people can get insurance and also that people that have had insurance are able to maintain that insurance even when they go from job to job or company to company. Senator Blunt, you're in charge of the inauguration? I am. I am. I'm chairing the Joint Committee on the inauguration, and I'm not in charge of anything that happens after uh, the um, after President Obama leaves the Capitol or, after, or, or when uh, President Trump leaves the Capitol, but all of the things that happen here that morning right up until the um, president has... Uh, Take, the new president has uh, taken office, and there's one event here at the Capitol after that, a lunch event. And, uh, you know, dealing every day, as I have been for the last seven months, with uh, the security considerations, the uh, what happens uh, with uh, how you get people in and out of here as uh, safely and easily as you can. And uh, I'm looking forward to that, but I'm already looking forward to... Uh, about one o'clock that day, when when uh, that is over and everybody has uh, safely left the Capitol, but uh, it's a great experience to be part of, and uh, I look forward to what can happen with uh, the new president. I think he brings a he brings a synergy to this process that is is a good thing. He is he looks at things differently than other presidents have or uh, other people who have been trying to solve these problems have, and that makes all of us look at. Uh, at these uh, problems and think, okay, what's what's the new president going to think? And then suddenly you're thinking a little differently than you might have before, and, and I think all of that is good. Senator Blunt, last question for you here, and that is uh, today no one believes anything they read in any media outlet, liberal, conservative, down the line, whatever else. You were there in Washington. Tell us something we don't know. Fill us in on something that's being misreported or, or not getting through the clutter. Well, there's a lot that's being misreported, but never on uh, the McGraw show. So, uh, <laughs> Smooth as always. Senator that would be my best advice, to spend more time listening to McGraw and Kelly, and uh, you'll have better information than you might otherwise have. Roy Blunt is making St. Louis great again. <laughs> Senator Blunt, thank you for your time. Be safe out Good there. Good to talk to you. All See right. you soon. You got it. 726, Big 550, KTRS.